we are all born as blank slates, right? And that as we grow, I mean, the minute we come into the world, we are learning things and how to act and certain behaviors, what gets rewarded, what doesn't, and that we're born as blank slates, but the world molds us into who we are. The debate is to how much your genetics or nature is involved versus the nurture, which is your environment in forming who you are. Uh, we are all sort of a product of our genes and, and um, you know, our, the molecules that those genes uh, direct the synthesis of and the biochemical reactions that go on. And so a lot of our identity is, is, uh, is biological. Biology, your culture, um, of course your family dynamics, right? All the things that you're raised in, the types of household that you're raised in, are, affect your development. When she was growing up, Tati had lots of rules. She didn't go outside and play with other children. She was uh, always supervised, so she didn't have the chance to uh, get into a whole lot of stuff with other students. She started playing basketball when she was four, and we've been going to games and practices together ever since. Why am I the person that I am? Why do I do the things that I do? Why do I believe the things that I believe? Is it all because of my mom? Or because of the games I play? The things I see when I walk out the door? Or the people I hang around? Um, I've been around Tatiana Powell for four years now. And she has no lid, no self-control which makes me think she definitely has the COMT2 gene. Carlton was in a bag. Ethan was in a mouse four. And play is a really important aspect to all kids. We know that most of what young children learn is through play. Playing with adults, playing with their peers, they're playing out familiar scenes and scenarios in their everyday life. When we have that little kitchen in the classroom, right, in a preschool classroom, the reason that they're going to the preschool, to that area, is a lot of the time we're seeing them like play out familiar scenes with mom and dad. So as a therapist, we always are watching really carefully what are they playing in those scenes. Whenever I try to move, somebody try to do on me, I try to do it back on um, when you when y'all playing in y'all room, do y'all be um like doing moves that y'all see on the, on the video games? Uh, yes. Yes. We do like fighting and try to make fight in my hand like this. What they be doing? Uh huh. And try to fight really fast, like they be doing too. Yep. Well, see, twins are a, a good example because. When you have two people that have the same genetic makeup, um, it allows them to almost form a natural experiment. When they have been able to bring those identical twins that have been separated at birth back together to see how similar or how different they are. And so it allows us to see what factors um, have the environment played on them, even though they have the same genetic makeup, are they the same growing up in different environments and where are they different? What type of video games do you play? Sports video games for me. I, got, I love it. I play that all day. Killing stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you ever find yourself mimicking the games? No. When we was little, we used to like go around the house and just act like we was in the game. We'll get some um, like little toy guns and tell like we shooting each other. <laughs> but there's a fine line between pretend play that's showing appropriate aggression and pretend play that sometimes is taking it over the edge. Do you know what your children are seeing when they walk out the door to go to school? In my neighborhood, I sometimes don't feel safe to walk out the door. When I look to my left, I see boys on the corner waving their flags, screaming, hey girl, come here, what's your name? When I look to my right, I see vacant lots, liquor bottles all over the floor, abandoned apartment buildings. I see, I see, I see, I see cars. 
What else? Uh, I, I see spiders. I see trees. People were breaking their houses, people getting shot, raped. Little kids around here just coming around cursing. Disrespectful. It's a bad neighborhood. The Lundell neighborhood to me is a very dangerous neighborhood just because, like, if you look outside the window, you'll probably see boys on the corner game banging. Like, it's a lot of game affiliation that goes on in this neighborhood. Some people argue that they learn right from wrong from the moment they enter the world. I mean, if you think about babies are constantly watching how we interact. And you can take it a step further um, if you subscribe to the idea that, of attachment theory, which is that you know a baby has to attach to its mother to be able to be happy and flourish in the world, right? They believe that a lot of people say that some of the most dangerous criminals, some of the biggest serial killers have really attachment disorder, okay? That they never attach to their moms. I haven't found any evidence that has shown that we are just born the way we are and, and that's it, that nothing has influence. Um, I think that um, we really have to look at, I mean, education is key, right? But also, um, children learn behavior from what, who's important to them. So that's why parents play a, a very important role, teachers, but also the larger culture. I mean, if you look at music, musicians, celebrities, all have an influence and in children learn behavior and how to act from these figures. Because we talked about that at school, we do not steal stuff from anywhere <coughs> or from nobody. Um, what if I talk back to my teachers? Is that good or bad? No, that's bad. Is that bad? My basic view on right versus wrong is that to me something wrong, something that's wrong is if it causes harm to someone, mentally, physically, emotionally, that's wrong. It's very important um, for parents to be there and to have a very uh, uh, a safe home and a and a loving home. Cause like we don't have a father in our life, so if our mo mother wasn't as like taking care of us and nothing like that, we probably would've been on the streets or something. Put your children in activities. Make sure you participate with them. Listen to them, and most mostly uh, care for them. I think what society needs to develop um, good. A children that turn into great adults is we need to really come together and you know so much onus is right now on the immediate family to do everything right mom and dad should do everything but we've kind of forgotten that we all play a role in our community right and that everyone has a place in the whole village it takes a village to raise a child it's kind of my philosophy it does I think there's a lot of pressure right now on mom or dad have to do everything, right? And they can't always. You know, everyone's so busy now. Think about what it takes to live in a in a city, right? We both live in cities. We know how much you ha how hard you have to work, how hard it is to hold down a job. Then you've got to take care of your kids and get them to school. So, where can we look within a community to help support a family to give them what they need? I am a lot like my mom. I have her smile her cheekbones, and her eyes. But seeing what I see, hearing the things that I hear, uh, it affects me. It affects what I think and how I view people in the world. But I have a mom that listens, coaches that care, and teachers who don't give up on me. So now I can start to make it on my own. <laughs>